Hi family, Kevin Cosmo here. I'm a medical student over at Western University, father of four, ultra marathoner, creator of high energy parenting. In today's video, I wanna share with you how I did so amazingly well on the MCAT cars section. It's the critical analysis and reasoning section. I've got eight tips for you. It'll help you do fantastically well in the section. It really can be quite easy. I know some people think it's a little challenging or it's hard to study for, but there are some, I think, really foundational approaches that you can use and study tips that really make it a lot easier to do quite well. My first tip is go sideways. Whenever you're reading new information, whether it be an undergrad material or just for fun in your science fiction magazine, try to synthesize, try to connect topics to other topics. The more you can go sideways and laterally connect topics, the more connections you make within the neural network, as well, the easier it is to understand new concepts and integrate them into your worldview. And if you do find yourself reading over passages as you're studying for the cars and you don't know much about art or history or philosophy, go read. Enjoy reading some of those books in your off time, in your downtime. I know you may not have a lot of downtime studying for the MCAT, but find time to just read over some articles that may be more interesting than some of the articles given in some of the MCAT study material. The second tip is that perfect practice leads to perfect performance. I had a coach who used to say this in a little bit of a funny way. He used to say, prior planning prevents piss poor performance. And it's quite true. When it comes to taking long tests like the MCAT, you have to practice taking long tests like the MCAT. If you're finding yourself getting bored or nodding off in the middle of a long cars passage at the end of a long MCAT study session, well, you have to practice a little bit more of that. It's kind of like shooting free throws at the end of a long basketball practice. The only way to mimic being tired at the end of a game and shooting free throws is to get yourself tired and shoot free throws. So you've got to do some long study sessions and then read some long, boring passages. It'll get easier. Third tip goes right along with tip number two. Practice like you're going to play. Time yourself because the real MCAT is timed. You may find yourself struggling to keep up with the reading or get through the section or answer every question. That's okay. You need to know where your shortcomings are. And if time is your shortcoming, well, make it into a strength and or at least start focusing on it. So time yourself every single time you're practicing. Time yourself. Moving to the fourth tip follows right after the third tip, which is time's the issue and time's of the essence. Learn speed reading. I think speed reading is a fantastic way to accelerate your way through the car section as well as all the other section and allow you more time to think about each question and think about each answer. And this can simply be done. I have a link down below as to a simple set of recommendations for speed reading tips. But the simplest tip I could give you without getting into too much depth would be knock off the first word or two of every sentence and of every line, I should say on the page and on the end, knock off the word or two on the end of it as well. And that way you're going back and forth in the middle of the passage. You have less for your eyes to go back and forth. Your eyes will pick up the first word and the last word easily. So skip right over them, focus on the middle. That's the quickest tip I can give you, but it's quite effective. My fifth tip for succeeding on the cars section is to read the entire passage. I tried a spurt of reading through the questions first and then trying to go through the passage and see if I could quickly go through and find the question answers it really didn't help me at all. It kind of confused it and muddled. It was easier to just give a full read through of the passage and try to understand the tone and the intent of the, of the author. If you find yourself across a, coming across a sentence or a word that you don't know, don't, don't fret over it, move on. The main thing is to understand the gist of the paragraph and definitely of the overall piece itself. That's my recommendation. Read the entire passage and then move on to the question. Tip number six, when it comes time to select the right answer, my suggestion here is to rule out the wrong answers first and then do your best to not necessarily figure out what the right answer is, but what the right answer the author thinks would be correct. The author of the passage, that's who you're trying to understand and communicate that you understand in the answers. And if you have two, you've ruled out two and you've got two left that you don't know what to pick, pick one and flag that question and move on. You're better off just kind of going with what you think right off the bat, rather than spending a minute or two in the midst of a question there, I suggest you just move on, come back to it after you have more time within the cars section. For me personally, I'd much rather get through every single question in the cars section rather than leaving eight or four questions blank at the end because I didn't have time to get through it. I'd much rather go back at the end, which I had time to because of the speed reading, because of this tactic, I had a good 10 minutes to go review my car section and I still got the top percentile. Tip number seven is after you've gone through a passage, take a break, take a breath, close your eyes, focus on your happy place, whatever it is for you, take a moment to decompress and separate 
what you just did from what you're about to do because you don't want to be thinking about past questions or answers or passage topics. You want to be fresh and in the piece that you're moving into. Tip number eight applies to all sections of the MCAT as well, and truthfully about all sections of life, I suppose, and that is to take proper care of our hygiene and our health. If we don't have proper care of our sleep, well then our mental game functions, our physical activity functions, everything starts to go away if our sleep goes away. Same thing for our diet. If our diet is junk, then our thoughts are not as great as they could be. We could say they're junk. And so take care of your diet, take care of your sleep, make sure you're getting physical activity, make sure you're getting fresh air. All those elements of health allow us to have better mental function as well. So if we wanna process new information and retain it and apply it on an MCAT, well then we've gotta take care of this organism that is in charge of processing, maintaining, and applying this information. So I hope these tips help you do better on the MCAT, and ultimately I hope the MCAT allows you to become a doctor, and I hope you go on to become a fantastic doctor, helping people have fantastic levels of health.